Hi, Sean from Phil and Sean's Vintage Model Radio Museum with an example of Galloping Ghost. This is the home built approach on the test rig and there's a commercial actuator there which I'll go through in a little bit more detail in a second. So, home built receiver. This was a, an article in the UK magazine rcm &E. It's a relayless super head, so it used an electronic switcher device to control the actuator which was made from a modified Mighty Midget motor. This was a, a very standard device. They had the advantages that it would run reliably on low voltages. Uh, the, the motor as it came is how it came out of the box. So it had the 7 to 1 gearing and basically you put the pin in. The rubber band is for centering purposes. Uh, you could put a collet on the back. The torque rod then runs through to what was known as the bird cage. This is the wire work at the back and this allows you to translate the output, the rocking output of the motor to give you up and down elevator left and right rudder the throttle was gained by either a full tone or no tone situation from the transmitter this is known as a pod pulse emission detector and where the big red LED is you would actually have a, an escapement or a, a like a Fred rising clockwork actuator built in there to give you two or three position throttle center tapped battery pack there 4.8 volts the reason you needed that is because you have to drive the motor both ways left and right so you needed a center tap supply to do this. So if we turn it on, as you can see, rocking away, and this is the neutral position. If you actually look, you can see the rudder is uh, flapping away merrily around neutral. Okay, and how the system worked is although it's flapping, the average of the extremes of a flap were actually the flight path that the plane would take. Same for the elevator. Now if I put down elevator and it's actually easier to see but you can see there as I go right and left you can see that it's tracking away following the stick movement and it's the same with the elevator so full down it was a very quick short pulse so it kept it in down position up it was moving further as you can see there the rotation of the disc so that's a down and that's up so it meant that the cycle time was greater and it allowed the cam to rock so it deflected the elevator further up okay and for the pod you sent full signal or no signal it's actually difficult to see under the light but there you can see the red leds come on that would output to an actuator and it will give you a change of state now there's one other actuator on here that i alluded to earlier this was climax this was actually a modified reed actuator uh, made by Terry Tippett who was a very well known exponent of uh, Galloping Ghost and if we just connect this up you can see it works in a different way but the the output is the same so here we go you can see this thrashing away so if we look at the back arm first you can see down elevator it's coming back up elevator down elevator up elevator and the other arm, there we go, that's left, right. So you can see there it's biasing itself to the right, left, staying to the left. Not a very high powered device, but if you didn't have the skills to do the bird cage, etc., this allowed you to have push rods on the output. And a quick run by the transmitter. This was a tremendously popular commercial transmitter made by McGregor, who uh, were one of the first companies in. Uh, First commercial company, single channel, transistorized single channel. They also made valve set kits as well. Um, there's a, another video of the Ivy set that they used to produce in kit form. And uh, it was a very well made transmitter, very reliable. Uh, as you can see, this 50 years old, this transmitter, 45, 50 years old, and it's still working well. Okay, thank you.